of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Heman, and Charcoal, and Dada, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And they came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. Now, this is our history. All the people of the world came to hear an Israelite king because the Lord gave an Israelite king, one of our forefathers, wisdom that exceeded all men. Egypt was one of the greatest civilizations on the face of the earth. And Solomon's wisdom exceeded the wisdom of Egypt, the books say. This is our history. This is when we were kings. All of this happened before the shores of America. In 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar came down and he besieged Jerusalem and he took of the king's seed back to Babylon. He took children, the books say, in whom there was no blemish who was skillful in all wisdom, cunning and understanding science. 605 BC, we wise, we understand in science, but they told us they got us from the dark continent and we were savages. All right, my brother, go ahead. When he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. This was about 30 A.D. that Jesus made this prophecy. 70 A.D. The Romans came down on Jerusalem and destroyed that temple and fulfilled this prophecy that Jesus just spoke to Israel. We're going back into this uh, printed history and it says, thus the Romans plunder could well have been worth tens of millions of dollars. The pillaging of the temple, its total destruction and the burning of Jerusalem with terrible suffering of, and loss of life occurred in 70 AD under the Roman general Titus. Tradition has it that the intense flames of the temple fire melted the gold and silver of the temple so that it ran between the cracks of the rocks. Roman soldiers then totally dismantled the temple stone by stone to extract the melted gold. Jesus says it's going to come a time when there ain't going to be one stone left upon another that will not be thrown down. And the reason being, when Rome burnt the temple, the intense flame melted the gold. It flowed between the rocks. They had to tear the temple down to get the gold because that's what they was after. Therefore, once again, the present year, the present year being 2010, This here destruction happened in 70 AD. That was 1,940 years from today's date that that prophecy came into being that Titus destroyed the temple of Jerusalem. We go back to printed history and it tells us in fact, since the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, Israel has been scattered among the nations in lowliness and obscurity. So for the past 1,940 years, we've been scattered throughout the world in lowliness and in obscurity. We're going to read something to you out of a history book, The Last Two Million Years. Start right here and finish right there. The last two million years, this is uh, page 87. Go ahead. The crucifixion of Jesus about AD 30 did not end Jewish resistance to the Roman occupation. In 70, when the country was again in a state of revolt, 
Jerusalem, the holy city, became the core of the resistance to the Romans. Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, proceeded to lay siege to Jerusalem. The city fell, and the inhabitants were enslaved in their thousands and dispersed throughout the Mediterranean world. And we were dispersed throughout the Mediterranean world. In 721 BC, the Assyrians came and got our nine brothers and took them out into the Eastern Hemisphere. In 70 AD, the Romans came and got us and dispersed us in the Western Hemisphere, the Mediterranean world. That happened 1,940 years ago. But now, we didn't come into America until 391 years ago. When you subtract that, they give you 1,549 years. 1,549 years, we were scattered in loneliness and obscurity throughout the Mediterranean world before we even came to America. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yet will I relieve a remnant that, it may, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the countries. He said, I'm going to tear it all up, but even though I'm going to tear it all up, he said, I'm going to leave a remnant that ye may have some that's going to escape the sword among the nations when you shall be scattered throughout the countries. Go ahead. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they should be carried captives, because I am broke, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which have departed from me, and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols. The Lord said, I'm broken with the way that you done turned on me, going after these other gods and going after these other idols. When I had you with me, there was no strange God among you. When I dressed you up and cleaned you up when nobody else wanted you and gave you the best of everything, now you taking what I didn't gave you and gave it to the rest of the, the world, just like a prostitute in the street. He said, I'm broken with that. He said, I'm getting ready to get you for it. I'm going to tear you to pieces. But I'm going to leave a small remnant of you left among the nations where I'm going to scatter you so you can remember who I am. Go ahead on and read. And they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And those who are left, they're going to hate themselves for what they didn't did. Because they're going to see how far they didn't fail. Yeah. You see how where we at now? Compared to where we was at when we were kings. And he began to build this house, it says, in the second month in the fourth year of his reign, right? Now we can ready to go into this print of history again. And we're going to look at this uh, temple that Solomon is going to build for the Lord. It says, it is known that most or all of the holy vessels of gold and silver from the tabernacle were with the ark when it was brought from the city of David to the first temple by Solomon. Although David desired to build a permanent house of God in Jerusalem, his son Solomon built the first temple. The plans were those of David, and David amassed the materials. The materials included 100,000 talents of gold and 1 million talents of silver. From his own private fortune, David also gave 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of high-grade silver. This is an enormous quantity of gold and silver by any standard. Now, once again, this information is 18 years old. 100,000 talents of gold equal 3,750 tons, valued 18 years ago at $45 billion. Today, as of yesterday, with the price of gold, it valued $132,802,675,000 dollars and 25 cents. This is the value of the gold that was in Solomon's temple if they had to rebuild that temple exactly to this day. One million talents of silver equal 37,500 tons, which a value of 18 years ago would have been $10.8 billion. 
Today, that silver would be 19 billion, 63 million, $957,062 and one cent. In round numbers, the wealth of the first temple was about $56 billion. The temple that Solomon built for the Lord in Jerusalem valued 18 years ago, if you had built that same temple 18 years ago with the amount of gold that they used, it would have been about $56 billion. If you would have built that temple yesterday with the value of silver and gold, it would have been $151,866,634,258.26. That's the house of God that we built before the shores of America when we were kings. Nobody never told us that. But history is telling us that now. It says, in addition to all of the gold and silver, great quantities of bronze, cedar, iron, and precious stones were contributed. The most holy place of Solomon's temple was lined with cedar from Lebanon and covered with 600 talents of gold. You got cedar from Lebanon. Good wood, right? He covered that good wood with gold. The gold plating alone, about 540,000 troy ounces, would be worth about 270 million today, which was 18 uh, years ago. The doors of the temple were also covered with gold plates. During this period of Israel's history, Solomon's income was 666 talents of gold per annum, per year, or about 600,000 troy ounces, worth $300 million a year at that time, right? As of yesterday, with the price of gold, Solomon's annual income would have been $660,900,000 a year. He was the richest man on the earth, and he was the wisest man on the earth with an income if you had to pay him as of yesterday, you would have been paying him $660,900,000 a year. During the reign of Solomon, silver was as common as stone in Jerusalem. <laughs> Solomon made 200 massive shields, each 300 shekels in weight to hang on the walls of his palace. Now look at this here. His ivory, he sat on an ivory throne. But that was covered with gold. He couldn't just sit on the ivory. His ivory throne was covered with gold. So King Solomon exceeded all of the kings of earth in riches and wisdom. The book told us that, right? History is bearing it out. So our father, King Solomon, the third king of our nation, he exceeded all of the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. It says the splendor of Solomon's kingdom brought him recognition and fame that attracted much foreign attention. For example, during her visit to test Solomon with hard questions, the Queen of Sheba brought Solomon 120 talents of gold. 18 years ago, that would have been $54 million. Today, it would have been $192,756,722.26. That's how much she brought him when she came to play with him. <laughs> and found out that what she heard wasn't even the half of it. She probably should have brought more. So I call you, you Jesus, oh Lord. I need you every step of the stand on. Give me to stay.
vexed soul when the wicked want you more. 